round to the difficult person. Actually, I should say the person you subjectively find difficult or have difficulties with or perhaps have some mixed feelings towards, maybe some resentment, some anger, um, some aversion toward. So as usual, we will start by just centering ourselves in our body and um, sending a little bit of metta around to each and every cell in our body to ground ourselves and bring ourselves into the present moment. And then we normally start, that's a kind of way of practicing self metta. Um, and then we usually go through the various categories that are listed in the um, Visuddhi Magga, one of the commentarial texts, but it has a lot of practice instructions. So it's quite an interesting text to, um, to read about practices such as loving kindness. So we will go, we will bring up someone who is dear to us, the so-called loved person category. So you might already want to think about someone like that who would fit that category for you. Maybe not the closest person in your life, especially if that's a spouse or a partner, because sometimes the relationship can be very loving, but also quite a lot of attachment and sometimes complexity there. So somebody with whom you have fairly a fairly simple, straightforward relationship with. Um, a good kind of yardstick is that when you think of them, your face and your heart sort of lights up. You just feel happy to know that they're in your life. So it might be a best friend, a teacher, it could be a spouse or it could be um, a child, maybe a nephew or a niece, uh, maybe a grandparent. So, or, or just a friend, it doesn't even have to be your best friend. And then we'll go on to the person who we don't have strong feelings towards. So the so-called neutral person in this um, categorization and uh, and spread meta to them and then we'll move towards a person who we do have more difficulties with so i would suggest for that that you don't choose somebody who is um really difficult and who when you bring them to mind may even cause you know a feeling of trauma or distress to arise so it shouldn't be anything very difficult or triggering but just somebody with whom there's like maybe a bit of contention. Um, maybe they're not your friend, you know, you perceive each other perhaps as enemies or people who don't get along, people who maybe you've been avoiding for some time. So don't go for the most difficult person in your life, but go for somebody toward whom there is some resentment, there is some blockage. And, um, and when you're working with that difficult person, just be very sensitive, be very gentle with yourself. Um, if you find that it's just bringing up a lot of anger and upset, um, sometimes you might want to stay with that and perhaps allow the person to fade away from your mind and just work with the anger or the difficult emotions that have come up, perhaps, you know, directing compassion towards those feelings themselves. Other times, if you want to stay on track with metta as a cultivation, you might want to just drop back to the loved person again. So just gently release the difficult, you know, the person with whom you have difficulties and, and go back to some a place where you feel very safe. Hmm? Someone you feel very safe with and build it up again with that person. So just to save me, you know, giving too many instructions as we do the practice, I'll just, you know, give that as a rough guideline now. So I guess the main message is that although it's, um, somewhat linear you know there'll be some kind of structure going through these categories please um, listen to yourself use your own intuition about it um, and just take care take care protect your own mental state your own mental well-being yeah so without without drawing back too quickly right give it a chance give it a chance and i just wanted to read a little passage of encouragement in one of the suttas. It's from the book that we've been studying together as a Dhamma discussion group. And it's from the sutta called The Simile of the Saw, which is one of the most um, extreme, you could say, uh, explanations of loving kindness, where the Buddha is basically saying, even if someone were to sever you limb by limb with a two-handled saw, one who gave rise to a mind of hate towards them would not be carrying out my teaching. 
So sometimes people think, gosh, that's a bit, you know, that's a bit extreme. How could that possibly uh, happen? And, you know, are we supposed to just let people cut us into little pieces? But that's not what the Buddha is saying here. He's just saying if such a situation were to arise and you would develop hatred at that time, um, you would have veered off the path because that hatred would be hurting you, first of all. And I think it also points to the kind of um, the importance of our own mental states that, you know, our own mind can harm us more than anybody else is capable of harming us. So that's a kind of, obviously we never want to be in that situation. We hopefully will never be in that situation. But the Buddha is saying that there's never really any good reason to develop hatred in our hearts. And the interesting thing in that sort of a little bit earlier on is that the Buddha is actually saying we should start with a difficult person here in this case. And I think this is interesting because obviously most of the time we might want to build up some meta first of all, you know, and the Visuddhi Maga, as I say, they start with the loved person and then the um, neutral person. But here the Buddha is saying that there are five ways of speech that others may address us. And I'll just go through that because I think we can probably all relate to it. So he says, people may address us with speech that is timely or untimely, true or untrue, gentle or harsh, connected with good or with harm, spoken with a mind of loving kindness or with inner hate. And then he says, monastics, you should train yourselves thus. Our minds will remain unaffected. We shall utter no evil words. We shall abide compassionate for their welfare with a mind of loving kindness and without inner hate. We shall abide pervading that person with a mind imbued with loving kindness and starting with that person, <laughs> we shall abide pervading the all encompassing world with a mind without hostility and without ill will. So I've summarized that a little bit, but it's interesting because that's one place in the suttas where the Buddha actually mentions to begin with the person we've developed resentment toward and in that way we're able to nip it in the bud if you like so that these resentments don't develop and fester in our minds so it can be very useful but of course the purpose of this group is that we you know we keep on circling back through the different uh, categories of people so that we're developing meta in a very rounded way um, which hopefully fits you know, spills over into your lives as well. And your general kind of quantity of loving kindness will keep on increasing. So, shall we practice? Or are there any quick things to clarify, especially for anyone who's new? I'm presuming most of you might not be so new to meditation even. Are we good to go? Yeah. <laughs> Still waking up, I think, a lot of us. <laughs> so for loving kindness meditation, especially, it's important to be at ease, to be comfortable in your body. So please do uh, shift around a little bit, stretch if you need to. And just ask your body how it would be most at ease, most comfortable. It might involve big shifts. You might want to change your sitting place, lean against something, or maybe just little tiny adjustments. And as you close your eyes, you'll find you become more aware of the sensations in your body. And those sensations can help guide you as to how you best want to sit. <laughs> See some of you have teddy bears. That's also a nice meditation posture to be hugging a teddy bear. <laughs> so just closing our eyes, arriving in this present moment, arriving in your own body, in your own space.
hopefully recognizing that space as a safe space. You maybe have the door closed or you are secluded in a quiet part of your home. So just appreciating this quiet time of solitude that you've offered to yourself. Ah, and arriving. And as it says in the Satipatthana Sutta, the first step of meditation is to establish mindfulness as a priority. And along with that mindfulness, tapping into these three beautiful right intentions, right motivations, of letting go, loving kindness, non-ill will, and non-harm, compassion or gentleness. And when we combine these beautiful right intentions with that mindfulness, what we get is kindfulness a lovely term coined by my teacher, Ajahn Brahm. So that as that mindfulness starts to spread through your body, it also spreads warmth, friendship and kindness to each and every cell. So just beginning where you wish, perhaps at the top of the head or maybe at the feet, and allowing that kindfulness to pervade your entire body. Illuminating any sensations, feelings, maybe emotions or thoughts. and also welcoming them as a friend, offering your kind hospitality to whatever arises as you spread your attention from top to toe. And enjoy doing this. Enjoy giving yourself that attention, appreciating your body, all it does for you, and appreciating this opportunity just to connect, to understand your inner world. And if you do come across any areas of tightness, 
pay attention. Just give them that little bit more attention. Extra kindness and care. And notice if that changes the experience. How does your body respond when it's met with kindness? Kindness that allows, gives space. Just receives without pushing anything away. And also allowing yourself to receive any pleasant sensations. Maybe a slight softening of pain or tension. Maybe tingling, warmth, relaxation, ease. However subtle, just appreciating the delight of a relaxed body, a relaxed mind. So I'd now I'd like to invite you, if you wish, to follow the guide of metta. To bring to mind a very dear person. You might picture their face. Perhaps looking at you, smiling into your eyes. Or maybe just get a sense of their presence, of how it feels to be together, to be around them. Or perhaps Remembering the qualities that you really appreciate and respect. Just very lightly holding them in mind. So that you're aware of the recipient of your metta. And connecting 
with your wishes of loving kindness for this person who's very dear in your life. If you wish, you can use the phrases, classical phrases of loving kindness, such as may you be happy, May you be free. May you be healed. May you be at peace. You might choose only one phrase or you can use up to four. But see if you can find what really, something that really resonates and captures your wishes for this person. <clears throat> And as we use these phrases of loving kindness, you could imagine it like planting a seed in very fertile soil. And between each phrase, listening to the resonance of those words, allowing the mind to follow that direction as though your mindfulness and kind awareness were watering those seeds, shining sunshine upon them, so that in their own time, according to nature, they produce the beautiful flower of loving kindness, the emotion of loving kindness in your heart. So just using these phrases, if they support you, and listening in the space between each phrase, imagining your friend receiving these wishes of loving kindness being soaked through with your benevolence, your goodwill.
And if you find your mind wanders away or the words become automatic, just refresh that image, that sense of the loved person in your mind. And once again, connect with the meaning of these words of loving kindness. Trusting in the power of the intentions of loving kindness to bring about the results. Trust content to plant the seeds. Staying connected to your own body and any sensations, particularly any pleasant sensations that are connected with the loving kindness. We're going to gently say goodbye to the loved person, perhaps with a smile or a gesture of gratitude. And allow this loving kindness to start flowing to someone who you don't know so well. A person who you don't have particularly strong feelings of friendship or dislike towards. The neutral person. Perhaps a person you've just met once or twice, but don't know their name. Someone you maybe see in the street or in the local shop, but don't really stop to notice. Perhaps a distant neighbor. And just getting a sense of this person as though they were sitting in front of you or by your side. And just continue, perhaps adapting the phrases or maybe using the same words, gently spreading loving kindness to this person too. Imagining them receiving your loving kindness feeling cared for, feeling seen, relaxing in your presence.
Now just checking in with yourself. And if you find you feel fairly resourced, you would like to try. And just releasing the neutral person and inviting in someone who you perhaps have a difficult relationship with. toward whom there may even be feelings of hurt or anger, resentment, but feelings that don't overwhelm your mind. Just someone who you don't really like very much, perhaps. A so-called difficult person in your life. Perhaps recognizing that they too wish to be happy, free from pain. And see how closely or how far away you want to imagine them right now. and start spreading loving kindness towards them too. Again, adapting the phrase as if you wish. And always listening in that space between each phrase, allowing the mind to gently incline toward the meaning, the felt experience of loving kindness. Whatever feelings may arise for you, holding them too in the field of loving kindness. All are welcome here. knowing you can always return to the loved person should you need to.
Now, gently thanking this person and thanking yourself for taking steps to soften any anger or resentment. And gently release this person from your awareness, allowing them to fade. As you stay in contact with your body, any pleasant feelings or emotional resonances of loving kindness. And now imagining that loving kindness like beautiful golden energy that starts to spread from your body into this whole Zoom room to all the people sitting here together practicing. Just allowing thoughts, feelings, intentions of loving kindness to spread to everyone sitting here. May we all be happy. Free from suffering. May we be healthy. May we be at peace. Imagining that golden energy suffusing everyone in this room. And as our loving kindness is shared, it continues to grow and starts spreading outward in all directions to all beings in front of you. All beings, human or non-human, visible or invisible, far or near, all beings who include those beings that you care for, that you love, Beings that you don't know. And maybe those who are disagreeable to you. All beings. Beings performing kind actions right now. Those with lofty and noble minds. And all beings who are harming or hurting others, causing suffering for themselves and for other beings. May all beings be happy. Be peaceful. Be liberated. Allowing that metta, that loving kindness to spread to both sides. To the east, to the west, and also behind you. In all directions, 
as far as it will. And also above and below. May all beings in every direction receive our combined loving kindness. May they all be safe, free from affliction, may they do what is noble, and refrain from harming others. May all beings know peace, know true happiness, All beings in the skies, the birds, the insects, beings in the earth, the worms, the voles, the wombats in their tunnels. And all creatures of the seas, the oceans, the rivers and lakes. All beings who breathe. All beings who wish for their own happiness and ease. Imagine our loving kindness reaching all beings. Boundless, immeasurable. Unconditional loving kindness that brings peace, harmony, comfort and freedom to all beings in this world and beyond to this whole universe. And now very gently imagining, bringing back this beautiful energy of loving kindness. Drawing it in. Into your own body, into your heart. Again, like a beautiful golden light Or maybe feelings of warmth, softness, ease, bringing that all into your own heart.
and offering yourself this beautiful, powerful, healing, loving kindness. Connecting to your deepest heartfelt wish for yourself. And showering yourself with loving kindness. Including all parts of yourself that you appreciate, respect. All those parts that you ignore or reject. Holding it all in pure, unconditional loving kindness. I'm going to chant some phrases of metta to end this session as you bask in the golden light and the warmth of loving kindness that you too deserve. Sabe Sata Sabe Pana Sabe Buddha Sabe Purgala Sabe Atapawa Pariapana Sabe Etio Sabe Purisa Sabe Ariya Sabe Anaviya Sabe Deva <coughs> Sabe Manusa Sabe Vini Padika Awe Rahon Tu Abya Paja Hon Tu Ani Gahon Tu Sukiatanam Pariharan Tu Dukkha munjantu Yadalada sampadito Mawe gajantu Kamasaka And if you wish Come out gently, or you can join in the three sadhus. <laughs> sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Lovely. So that is the end of the meditation, but do stay within your body. Don't throw it all away too quickly. <laughs> and uh, I will open for any questions or comments. We were recording this session, so you can follow it again, but I think we'll stop the recording now. <laughs>